Water birds, fish, tiny crustaceans, or human beings. Nearly every organism is a host for another. Evolutionary biologist Manfred Melinsky is particularly fascinated by parasites, not least due to their often extremely complex life cycles. There are many species of parasite that infect different species of hosts consecutively. They have to run the full gamut of stages to successfully reproduce either in the final host or after leaving the final host. Milinsky and his colleagues have examined the individual stages of development of one particular parasite in detail. Do life cycles like these, as Darwin predicted, really allow a parasite to produce the maximum number of offspring? To find out, the biologist is looking closely at a fish tapeworm that develops in a string of hosts. The final one is a waterfowl. In this vogel. In this bird, the worm mates with another worm and produces eggs that are released into the water with the bird's excrement. In the water, they hatch and develop into free-swimming larvae that have to be eaten by a certain species of small crustacean, a copepod. After a certain period of time, the copepod has to be eaten by a three-spined stickleback, not any other species of fish. After exactly three months, the stickleback has to be eaten by a bird. That means an instantaneous temperature change from 12 degrees Celsius in the water to 41 degrees in the bird's gut. And the parasite has to be able to physiologically cope with that stress within just a few seconds. How does the parasite manage to get itself into each of the three hosts at just the right stage in its development? To find out, the researchers first looked at how the tapeworm makes it from the copepod into the fish. To do so, they first had to infect large numbers of the tiny crustaceans with parasitic larvae, which were then left to develop for either 11, 21, or 31 days. From the results, the scientists could determine the optimal point in the cycle for the parasite to make the jump into the fish. Does the parasite manipulate the copepod's behavior, making it more likely that they'll fall prey to a fish? To find out, the evolutionary biologists simulated an attacking fish by lightly shaking the containers holding the infected animals. If the tapeworm larva doesn't want to be eaten, then the copepod should remain still for a long while before moving again because the fish is near. But when the larva does want to be in the fish, the copepod should start moving again after a short pause to increase the likelihood that the fish will eat it. And that's exactly what happens, as is made clear by the light dots. Induced by the larva, the copepod on the right is active. It wants to be eaten. And the behavior appears at the optimal time calculated by the scientists. The window of opportunity lies exactly between 13 and 15 days. In other words, the larva has exactly two days to ensure that its copepod is eaten by a three-spine stickleback. The parasite controls the behavior of its host as if it were a puppet. The new insights into how the fish tapeworm achieves its goals might one day help us to more effectively fight parasites that infect human beings.